coworkers. Um, so the first one I'll talk about is I have three to talk about today, and the first one I'll talk about is um, 3A2, which is a crisis stabilization project. Uh, Plattsburgh, Queensbury, Fulton, and Nord Northern Adirondack regional teams will be participating in this project. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background information on why we have, as a PPS, have chosen this um, project. As, ooh, as behavioral health conditions account for 49% of ED admissions, which usually always results in inpatient care. They also represent seven out of the 10 most prevalent conditions among Medicaid beneficiaries, with major personality disorder and post-traumatic stress being the two most common. And 12% of our popul population, our region, reported being in poor mental health 15 or more days in the past month. And this is actually a population health indicator tracked through the BRFSS and um, the prevention agenda goal for 2017 is 10%. So we have project kickoff meetings coming up and most of you should have gotten a save the date and an invitation will be coming out soon and October 28th in Plattsburgh at the Holiday Inn and November 3rd in Glens Falls at the Queensbury Hotel from 9 to 12. Right now there's eight emergency mental health programs that already exist in our PPS and with this project we'll expand on these by adding crisis stabilization beds, mobile crisis units, 24-hour hotlines, and care coordination. Okay. Um, the next project is 3A4 and this is ambulatory detox and this project is going to be basically in Malone in the Plattsburgh area. And again, some of the reasons why we have chosen this project is that five to 8% of the Medicaid population has a drug abuse condition, and it's the fourth leading cause of hospital admissions. And in Clinton County, there has been a 45% increase in individuals that have an opiate disorder. And approximately 10% of the population are either dependent on alcohol, drugs, or both. And right now, there's only one detox unit that exists in our PPS, and that's at Canton Potsdam Hospital, and there's no outpatient facilities that exist. So the project kickoff meeting for this is going to be combined with the 3A2 um, in Plattsburgh at the Holiday Inn on the 28th from 9 to 12. This project plans to have two detox programs set up serving Clinton, Essex, and Franklin, and the Plattsburgh program will overlap with the 3A2, the Crisis Stabilization Project which will be beneficial for cost. The next project um, that I will talk about is 4B2. This is a Domain 4 project, which is very different than the Domain 3 and the Domain 4, or excuse me, the Domain 3 and the Domain 2 projects, as we as a PPS uh, set the milestones and they're not set by the state. So, Again, 4B2 we have chosen as a COPD prevention management project, and as we know, tobacco use is the single most preventable cause of death in the U.S., and although New York State has a very successful tobacco control program, 17% of upstate New York residents still smoke, with Franklin and Fulton having um, some of the highest rates at 30%. Chronic lower respiratory disease ranks as one of the top five leading causes of premature death in all of our PPS region. We actually had a project kickoff meeting for this in August, and we had over 20 partners join us at the High Peaks Resort, and we went over in Lake Placid, and we went over the implementation plan. And from that, we decided that we wanted to work on the evidence-based guidelines for the primary care and skilled nursing facilities first. So those meetings will be October 20th in Plattsburgh at CVPH. And that is actually from 7 to 9 in the morning. And Glens Falls meeting at the Crandall Library will be from 4 to 6 on the 21st. And along with the guidelines, this project will be working on home monitoring equipment, media campaign, educational programming, pulmonary fitness programs, and many more initiatives. So thank you. And I don't have a little leeway into my next, but it's Betsy Town. So thanks. Um, so as Jill mentioned, I'm Betsy Town. And um, I'm here to talk to you about um, 2B8, Hospital to Home collaboration. 
and 3GI, palliative care into PCMH. So this is the first project I'll talk about. So the majority of readmissions um, with patients um, from hospital to home care and back to hospital are patients with home care services. Seven out of 10 Americans say that they would prefer to die at home, but only 25% do. So there is a need to educate and train non-licensed providers, family, and caregivers to identify changes in conditions that warrant emergency care. Um, by bringing together primary care and the PCMH in a team approach, the individual is treated as an outpatient versus in the emergency department. Next project, 3GI. One of the things identified in the community needs assessment are that palliative care doctors are not comfortable having end of life discussions and don't possess skills, certification, and time to have in-depth discussions with patients who no longer are responding to treatments and need to begin care planning for end of life or consider other treatment options. Integrating palliative care into primary care has, shown, has been shown to increase patient and family satisfaction, improves quality, and has shown to help extend survival. By establishing patients' goals of care and management of complex pain and symptoms, palliative care teams can meet seriously ill patients' needs and help them avoid unwanted or expensive um, crisis care. Uh, Dr. Deborah Lang from CVPH is the project champion for this project. She brings a wealth of knowledge, experience, and enthusiasm for the growth of palliative care services in our area. Dr. Lang and three other providers are planning to attend the National Palliative Care Conference in San Antonio in November. We are looking forward to them sharing with us what they learned from that event that will assist us in our initiative. Um, we do have a project kickoff meeting scheduled for next Friday, October 16th, um, at the High Peaks Resort in Lake Placid. Anyone is, who is interested in attending or would like to know more information, um, please feel free to see me afterwards. Um, so with nothing further, I'd like to turn it over to Jessica Shanice, who will be talking to you about District Project 2DI. Thank you, Betsy. Um, as Betsy said, I'm Jessica Shanice, I'm Community Engagement Manager with AHI, and I am overseeing Project 2DI. 2DI focuses, which also known as Project 11, focuses on patient engagement and activation and integrating uh, the uninsured and low and non-utilizing Medicaid beneficiaries into community-based care, um, particularly preventative and primary care services. So why did we choose this project? Well, as we all know, there's been significant strides in uh, connecting individuals to affordable health care services and improving the quality and scope of the services that we offer. However, there's still a large segment of the population that for a variety of reasons chooses not to access the services or is unable to access the services uh, that they are entitled to through their benefits. If unless we address the barriers that are keeping this part, part of our population from connecting with uh, with necessary services, there will continue to be a large portion of our population who are disenfranchised from the healthcare system and therefore at greater risk for um, catastrophic and chronic health issues. This is actually a project that I'm very passionate about. Um, my background is in disability services and long-term care. Uh, during that, during uh, that time, I have I've had the pleasure of working with a variety of individuals, um, but unfortunately, very often by the time the individuals that I worked with had been connected to care and services, um, they were already suffering from chronic conditions that were the result of a lifetime of um, inadequate care, or ac inadequate access to care. Um, at that point, we were, you know, uh, we were only able to manage uh, the conditions that they had and try to slow their uh, um, inevitable pr progression. Um, this project 
offers us an opportunity uh, to reach individuals before these conditions occur um, and connect them to preventative and primary care services. So how are we going to do that? A few ways. Um, this project is all about meeting people where they are. We, and we're doing that uh, literally and figuratively. So we are going to be conducting outreach and placing community navigators at hotspots, um, which are areas that we, we will identify um, as having large concentrations of individuals uh, who are either uninsured or low and non-utilizing Medicaid beneficiaries. Um, we anticipate that the hotspots are going to be located at community-based organizations in part, um, and therefore we are going to be working with kind of non-traditional healthcare partners, um, social service agencies, faith-based organizations, um, food pantries, places that uh, individuals who are eligible for this project are already frequenting and have already developed um, trusted relationships with the staff there. So along with physically meeting people where they are, we are also going to be utilizing a tool called the Patient Activation Measure, which is licensed by Insignia Health, to assess a level, uh, an individual's level of activation. Activation in terms of healthcare is defined as the um, knowledge, skills, ability, and confidence to participate in your own health and healthcare. Um, by determining a level, an individual's level of activation, we will be able to help providers tailor their interactions to uh, have more productive and effective uh, interactions and interventions with these individuals. So as of now, um, in July, we held train the trainer sessions for use of the uh, patient activation measure survey. Um, so we have a group of trainers and we are beginning a small pilot program um, with uh, members of the pilot group include North Country Healthy Heart Network, um, the Family Counseling Center of Fulton County, Community Maternity Services, um, Hudson Headwaters Health Network, and we will be using our uh, internal ease department as part of the pilot as well. Um, we hope to launch the pilot, uh, get people administering the PAM survey by the end of October, beginning of November, and once we've used that as a way to identify best practices and troubleshoot, we will then expand it to the rest of uh, our, our partners. Um, I'm not sure that that 700,000 number is correct. Is it? 200,000? 200, okay. So by the end of DISRIP, we do expect. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I know, not, not that 200,000 is small, but that, yeah, definitely a little bit more. So we do expect to engage over 200,000 uh, eligible individuals by the end of this project. Um, so I definitely. Uh, we need all the help that we can get from our community partners. And I, like I said, I do think we're, this is a very important project so that um, members of our community who have so far been disenfranchised will be able to take advantage of all of the great services that we are trying to create for them. So thank you.